Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. And welcome to another edition of Comic Book Quickies! For those of you new around here, Comic Book Quickies is where I look at a bunch of short comic book related material, usually advertisements, and just goof on them a bit. It's good, because I can stop the episode whenever the hell I want, keep it short and easy for me. I usually do them right before a hundredth episode, so I have more time to work on that. Not that that has ever actually worked out, and my schedule continues to slip so that I've had to reschedule two episodes to next year in the vain hope that I can get back on schedule again. Remember when I had a schedule that I stuck to for years? <laughs> I'm slowly deteriorating before you all. But before I collapse into a heap of broken promises for when stuff is supposed to come out, let's turn our attention to a collection of short comic book related ads and minutia. What's on the docket for today? A flea market eating flea? Captain America shilling toothpaste? Spiromania? Soggy's ruling? Well, definitely not that last one. Let's dig into some quick comic book related material and see for ourselves. Start things off properly with a hostess fruit pie ad. Batman and the captive commissioner. Oh God, the fruit pies are holding Commissioner Gordon hostage. Commissioner Gordon has been captured by the three Svengali brothers, underworld figures. I wish this had been the three Svengali brothers. That would have been more appropriate for Longbox's 10th anniversary. Without its commissioner, Gotham City is in total chaos. And indeed, we see looters and rioting going wild in the background of this panel. So it turns out Spider-Man didn't need the good vibes cannon at the end of Maximum Carnage. I guess if you put Commissioner Gordon into a city, it'll keep everything in line. Why does Gotham City need Batman if it's Commissioner Gordon's presence that keeps the city from descending into chaos? Two of the Svengali brothers say they'll go make a deal with Batman so they can take over the city. And I'm pretty sure one of them is a Nazi. Or he just works on the island from the prisoner. In any case, they soon have Batman with them. Don't try nothing, Batman. This car is computerized to take you to our hideout no matter what you do. My god, OnStar! Why do you betray me? In that case, let's enjoy some snacks. You guys like Doritos? I like Doritos. Go. Oh. Superstitious cowardly lot, huh? How's that going for you? No, instead he passes them some Hostess fruit pies. And they're so enamored by the things that, frankly, look more like one of those Smuckers Uncrustables, that Batman is indeed able to punch them both out at once. And I guess Batman radioed Robin to let him know what kind of idiots they were dealing with, since in the final panel, he's there to help knock out the final brother. Also, it looks like the word balloons were stacked the wrong way. Batman, you've done it again! Let's say I had a little bit of help from Hostess. Also from self-driving cars! They should totally be more of a thing! We only injured four pedestrians on the way, and two of those were on the sidewalk we drove onto! Don't ask about the one red SUV. And now, excerpts from the Super Dictionary with that guy with the hat. Buzz. Conjura heard a buzz in the cellar. She heard a low sound that went on and on. When she heard more buzzes, she went down the steps. Bees, my god. 
So it's important to remember that back before the internet, or even comic book stores as a major thing, getting access to comic books was limited to a newsstand, either on a street corner or a gas station or something that carried them. That was mostly fine for people back then because, well, there was less stuff inside the house to make them want to stay home, so they'd bike to these places anyway, or their parent would be happy to bring them along while they ran other errands. But the restriction of the newsstand was that they had a limited number of titles and not necessarily the lesser known ones. So if you were a big Superman fan, you'd probably be fine, but if you wanted a copy of Jonah Hex or House of Mystery, you might be out of luck. And that's where we get subscription services, where Marvel and DC would mail you their comics directly. Why wasn't that called the direct market? These services still exist, of course. An annual subscription that sends 12 issues of any titles you select straight to you. Always an option if you want to get physical copies but don't live near a comic store. Mind you, though, the prices have gone up quite a bit as the prices of the books themselves have risen. But back in the day, Marvel and DC advertised these services with mini-comics. So let's check out some of these, starting with Superman as he heads to a newsstand. Gee, I'm sorry, Superman. We're all sold out of this month's DCs again. Thanks anyway, Tommy. But now I have to fly around the Earth really fast in reverse time. I need my copy of Legion of Superheroes, and I'm not letting some punk kid get it instead! I'll go see my friend Carol at DC. She'll know what to do. Superman uses his celebrity status for his own personal benefit. Without your help, Carol, I'd have a hard time getting my favorite titles. Wait, couldn't you have just flown to another newsstand? I mean, you are Superman. You could check every one of them on the East Coast in seconds. So Carol here is happy to tell Superman about their current deal. Four subscriptions for the price of three. $15.99 will give you 48 comics, 12 issues a year for four series. Bear in mind, this was 1981. The average comic price was 50 cents. So yeah, even factoring in shipping costs, this was a pretty damn good deal. That price for physical comics now would make you wonder what the scam was because that wouldn't cover five individual issues. But hey, it's still kind of weird for Superman to be the one promoting this for the aforementioned mentioned flight and super speed abilities. What about someone who doesn't have any superpowers promoting this? The facts are clear, Commissioner Gordon. The demand for DC Comics is greater than the supply. The Joker is threatened to blow up a hospital if he doesn't get his copy of Weird War Tales. I hope you can find a solution, Batman. The kids are counting on you. How are you looking at me for? You're the one who apparently keeps the city from going nuts. Oh my god, is that what the riot from the Hostess Fruit Pie comic was about? Lack of DC comics at newsstands? Why the hell aren't they just printing more? Or is DC during this period just trying to create artificial scarcity? To get the real story, I'll go to the source. Carol Fane at DC is the person to see. Carol Fane, the oracle of the 80s. I should note that Carol Fane was a real person, a writer and editor at DC. Not a huge bunch of credits to her name, mostly romance books, and I can't even find if she's still alive or not. I'm just curious why they chose her to be the DC spokesperson for these ads. But then again, more baffling is that Batman chose to drive from Gotham City to New York to try to figure out what the problem is with the distribution. And he doesn't really get that answer. She just talks about the subscription service. Now they come right to your door. Looks like the case is solved, Carol. It's rock and roll's fault that DC Comics haven't been hitting newsstands. That is not what I was saying at all. I'm telling you, you can get the comics from an alternative. Yep, once again, Batman has discovered rock and roll's nefarious impact on media. But hey, this was just DC side of it. Marvel didn't have a Carol Fane to get subscribers on board. Who did they have to tell people about their service? According to my calculations, a year's worth of any 50 cent monthly Marvel comic would cost six dollars! Only Doom can do basic math like that! Suck it, Richards! Even if you subscribe at the standard rate, Four of your favorite titles cost a big $24 per year! Even the Fantastic Four can't escape that fact! Can Office Max supply you with Marvel Comics, Richards? No! This is why Doom wins! But I'm Dr. Doom, and I'm offering a super special deal. Now you can order four titles for the price of three. Pay only $15, a big $9 savings over the regular rates. None can compete with Latveria's competitive prices. I am Doom, master of the savings. And indeed, even the Fantastic Four are impressed by this. I'd be a fool to argue with that logic. Then again, it may be a trap. So you're gonna get people to sign up for your subscription service, 
by having a super villain promote it and then have the hero say that it could be an evil scheme and you shouldn't necessarily trust it. Okay, I see why DC had Carol Fane handle this. And now, excerpts from the Super Dictionary with that guy with the hat. Finger. Green Lantern wears a ring on his finger. He wears it on one of the parts of his hand. Green Lantern has five fingers on each hand, but only one ring. So a couple of months ago, I looked at the schedule and realized that I had forgotten to put in a Mr. T-related comic again. Don't worry, I fixed it! It's at the end of September, come hell or high water, and I'm doing an extra thing for Christmas. But the point is that I originally thought, hey, why don't I try to make the comic book quickies Mr. T theme to cover that? Well, unfortunately, I just couldn't find a lot of stuff with Mr. T that counted for comic book quickies. But I did find a couple of things. One was an advertisement for the 1985 to 1986 NBC Saturday morning cartoons block that had Mr. T in it, but we'll save that for another day. Instead, let's focus in on that cartoon with the tie-in Mr. T cereal. Now, obviously, I did not get myself a box of the stuff to try, even assuming I could find an unopened box. I have this sneaking suspicion that almost 40-year-old cereal is not going to taste that great. Go figure. I don't think I would have liked it even in its prime. Crispy sweet corn and oat cereal. Because nothing screams B.A. Baracus, Clubber Lang, and the man who punched a shark quite as much as... Crispy sweet corn and oats. Point is, the back of the box had a little mini comic. Hey kids, start the day the Mr. T way. Grab the three nearest children to you and hug them like I am. A truck that is way too small compared to the kids in this panel is apparently approaching and then passes the kids to their shock that it didn't stop. Carol Fane has moved into direct distribution of Mr. T cereal subscriptions. Mr. T himself was conveniently nearby and asks what's up. All three kids say in unison, Mr. Mr. T, T, somebody, somebody just drove, drove away with our Mr. T cereal. Mr. T cereal being given away like it was from an ice cream truck, I guess. They won't get away with it! Come on! They want the cereal so bad, they'll choke on it! The robbers are indeed enjoying some bowls of Mr. T cereal, with crispy little teas made with corn and oats. Mr. T has somehow tracked them down. Since I've seen no evidence that he used anything other than himself, I'm adding his tracking abilities to the count. That's them all right. I know how to handle them. Mother. Inexplicably, the kids start making an eee sound without any prompting from Mr. T. It's like some sort of weird children of the damned invasion of the body snatchers screech. And apparently it sounds exactly like police sirens. The two criminals saying they have to run for it. Ha! Ah, ran the wrong way! I gotcha now! They ran towards the window that Mr. T was directly standing outside of. And so the story ends with the kids thanking Mr. T and getting to enjoy some Mr. T cereal. Because I guess neither the crooks nor the children could just get some at the grocery store or anything. This is Jell-O Man all over again. And now, excerpts from the Super Dictionary with that guy with the hat. He. He is my friend. That boy is my friend, and he is the thief. That man is the thief! So, what do we learn today, my friends? Well, we learned that Commissioner Gordon is vital for peace in Gotham, that Carol Fane is vital for distributing DC comic subscriptions, and that Mr. T is a vital part of your balanced breakfast. And God help you if you should disrupt that. Next time, the 700th episode.
offers the greater comic subscription package, Batman! You cannot compete with Doom's flawless logic! I have no time for your buffoonery, Dr. Doom! Rock and roll is trying to disrupt comics distribution! They are? Of course! My mortal enemies, the band KISS, they did this! Wait, you hate rock and roll too? This may be the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs>